We're doing the Victor Harbour to Goolwa um, steam ride. Um, it's not a steam, it's a diesel motor today in fire danger seasons. About half an hour and it stops at four different places. Really old station set up with the old luggage, all that sort of thing. I'll go down and have a look at that now. The old luggage trolleys, the ladies room has a waiting room for women only with the toilets off it. That's the original station, that's one of the first stations in Australia. Marsh River, uh, the bridge across it goes into Victor Harbour. This is where the High Marsh River actually goes out to sea. We've just come down the, a little walkway. Norfolk Pines, of course, everywhere. It's the top up where we parked Pines. We're going to do another walk around the other side. This little um, bit of a sand dune behind Fred goes straight out to the beach. Beautiful area through here. This is again the mouth of the river just takes a little turn up here and straight out to sea. The train you can hear in the background is the cockle train we went on earlier today. The train's coming, I just heard the whistle blow and it's going to cross the bridge shortly. I just hear it coming now, clank clank clank, here it goes. That's the train we are on this morning. On the High Marsh um, River Lagoon Walk, come down the steps and it heads up that way and it's just a view of the river with tea tree all around. Swing around, tea tree, the tea tree's all sitting in water. And there's Fred up the other end of the ball wall. It's all duck and weave under the, um, the paper barks with water all round, really pretty. As you walk out here you come to the High Marsh River again and then out to the sea. You can see here it's not quite enough as with everywhere, it's not quite enough water coming down the river at the moment to break through to the sea, but probably on a high tide it almost would here around, I don't know if you can see but there's on this edge there's um, shell ducks all along the edge and just a tiny little sand dune and it's the sea. And you look back towards all the tall Norfolk Pines, that's all of Victor Harbour for sure. Granite Island, an island is only 650 odd metres off Victor Harbour. There's a um, tuna business out there, I don't think that's going to come in very clear. Pan around to the island and there's a um, bridge that goes right across it that usually has a horse drawn tram operating but because they're doing bridge works at the moment it's not operating but you can still walk across there, there's no problems. And in the foreshore is just the end of High Marsh River. This is, an old, this is an old church premises, it sits right on the highest point in Victor Harbour. It's actually up for sale at the moment, it would make a fantastic uh, reception centre or motel or something. But we'll wait and see next time we come down what it is. We're on the bluff looking back towards Victor Harbour. Island with another little island. It's still on the bluff. We're not doing a walk. You can actually walk to the top.
tide's almost eight. Tide's out at the moment. Beautiful big trees all around the edge, a few houses. That's about it. We're at the Stokes Bay Native Garden. There's just so much to see here. Done a fabulous job over the time. This grass tree is fabulous. That's fruit there on the side. section of the native garden. We'll just swing around and some of the old man banks is probably 30 to 40 centimetres long. They're huge. Don't pull it away, it's fine. Let's look up the top. Yeah. And another big tree over the back the same. Rich just holding one of the banksias away from the banksia man. It's absolutely huge. It's only a small shrub, but oh boy, the flower's large. Let's do another twist around here. We're at Stokes Bay Beach. This is an enclosed little pool, safe swimming. It's got rocks all around the outside edge. Not too deep, it's a good kids beach right round up to the other side. You come through a, um, a walk of quite a thin crevasse between the rocks here to get here. And I'll just pan around. And the, this is the type of rock that's all around. This is the rock at the edge of the beach and I'm just going around this crevasse here that you can see. That's where you squeeze the rock. at the most but it's interesting. It's always heating up to dry out. Keep them out of the sand. Beautiful clean water. We've just driven down from Stokes Bay. This is King George Bay. Beautiful clean water. Really steep drive through here. This is what the cliffs are like either end. Little rowboat down there. And there's only two houses on the, this road in two Ks. It's a few bigger farms, but this is it. The water's so clear you can hardly tell what depth it is. Just on the Kingscliff Jetty, which is just oh, probably 50 metres over from here, having a flick around trying to catch a fish in the sea was being swimming around. He's just come out here, lined himself up, and zoom in on him. So I'd have a bit of sunbake on the concrete. Didn't think we'd get this close to any so close to town. We're probably oh, 100 metres from the shops here. Chambers Bay Conservation Park. This is just a little bit of an inlet from the sea on the way back from Cape Willoughby and the lighthouse. And looking up here, there's a lot of swans in the water, ibis, and this just runs around to the sea. So we'll have a walk up there. It's a really nice um, area. There's picnic tables and barbecue, all that sort of thing. Most of these swans that we're looking at are quite young, they're still brown. There's a black one at the front and a black one at the back. In 
hear the uh, beach in the background but it's a way through so we're not sure if this will twist around or not. This is the creek we've been following. We're doing a walk around that goes through to the beach. It's not actually going out to sea at the moment. Might get a bit of seepage and a high tide it might get some water but that's it. And right on that far point is a lighthouse where we were before. Now when I swing around, right off in the distance, which I'll come into, over that bit of water, the land you can see over there is mainland, South Australia. We're at Browns Beach, looking around towards American River. how deep the water is here because it's so clean you can just about see through it. It's heading up towards um, Pennshaw where the ferry leaves from. Just walking down to the beach, quite interesting rocks and the trees through here. The trees go right down to the edge of the river or to the water rather. Just at where all the rocks are dug out around the edge of the beach. I imagine that the storms that came through here sometimes could get quite intense. Over in the far um, background is American River with a few yachts and things out at sea at the moment. That's where all the um, oyster beds are. just doing the boardwalk down to where the seals are. All the boardwalk, there's no stairs. It's all boardwalk. A couple of seals down in the dunes. Mum and a baby. Not doing much. closer view of the whale skeleton which is here laid out on the beach with the, um, the boardwalk a little bit further up a few people there this morning and the seals just around the corner just on the edge of the beach here there's a mother and her baby seal just panicked. there's a good collection of seals along the beach not doing too much, but they're all there.
National Park on Kangaroo Island. Tremendously heavy seas out there. It's just a normal day. There's seals everywhere here. rocks along with half the population of Australia. Totally different, getting closer on the boardwalk. going but they're staying there. Up oh, there you go. Just outside Ad American River here, you can see across the mainland quite clearly. On a clear day, you can see Mount Lofty, which is 125 kilometres away in the Adelaide Hills. We're looking down towards Cape Jarvis, and you can actually see the wind turbines on the hill behind the Cape. It's all quite clear. It's a long way off from here, but it's an overcast day today. It's a bit harder to see than it would be if it's really sunny. And this is a protected bay where they used to do sealing. Um, they've had farming things. There's oysters right through now because it's such a nice, clear, slow um, passage of water through here. Little islands right through and all sorts of protected beaches. But most of them you can't get to. You can look at, but can't get to. And we're actually on the point, wrapped around mostly with water here. And these, it, this is the smallest part of the island. It's only a couple of kilometres wide from this is lovely flat inland sea. On the other side of the island it's really rough turbulent surf with great big cliffs only a few kilometres away. We're just down from the Bay of Shoals uh, winery on the edge of the bay here. Big group of pelicans all together. least bit concerned for it sitting there down behind them taking photographs and they're saying hmm has he got any food we're at little dip national park was which is in the side of Broome, four-wheel drive mainly this is a boat launching area 
don't think I've planned for bringing a boat down here, but this is about the only boat launch we've seen. It's a beach launch. And there it is. <laughs> Lovely clear water. Big rocks across, I'll just zoom out. Wrong way. moving about because there's some march flies around here. Lovely coastline. I don't know if I can get full perspective of this. This is a cutting dug to drain marshy farmland behind here. The cutting at its deepest point is 900 feet and it runs for a kilometre out to the, um, it's a big lake at the end. dug by a machine but it was bug dug by two men, a farmer, I can't um, I'll turn around, really can't get much perspective up this way because it's fairly overgrown. It runs, the farmland that was drained was at the top of this hill, which there's a lot of lakes right through here, it's all lakes and soggy land, and he made 100 acres of usable land. Absolutely incredible. Just having a look. It still looks damp down there. I don't know if it's still drained, but it's the same as everywhere else. They're in drought here at the moment. It's a feet and a half. I can't believe that two men would have done this in three years. And in their spare time, because they were farming as well. Not sure if this will come out or not. This is the machinery they actually used to do the cutting. Murray McCourt was the man that did the actual cutting. And it was a woke wine cutting. Just reading the machinery used was a caterpillar crawler tractor, a drawn ripper, and a scraper, and a single furrow plow. What a job! And I guess this is the ripper because it's got two big ripping blades on behind. We're at Beachport. Uh, I think it's about 45 k south of Robe. Incredible beaches here. This is the ocean side. But there's so many little beaches like this. Do a quick pan around. Lots of sheltered um, areas in between big rock faces. This is also the main whale watching area for this area in the uh, winter months. We've come around to South End, which is, oh, I think, about 20 k south of Beachport. More rugged. We're right out on the point of the opposite end of the bay. I can't believe this bit that chucks out in the ocean, though. There's climbing ropes on it. So I guess if you fell off there, you'd just end up in the sea, but it'd be fun trying to get out. Just walking a section of the walking track from Mount Duffin goes right back to South End down to the jetty. And if you look right across this whole bay, you end up back at uh, Beachport and then Road. So it's it's quite interesting. Just a bit further around, looking in the cove, all of these are lobster boats. This is one of the major capitals for lobster fishery. back along the jagged foreshore. Beautiful bay over the other side, fantastic swimming. 